Hi. I wanted to take you through this diagram and talk about some possible questions that I might ask you. I might say that here is a population of four people, and I might ask you to create all of the possible samples of two people, and then calculate the mean of each sample. If I asked you to do that, I would have you pair the first person with all people under the first person, so 15 and 16 is one possible sample. 15 and 17 is another possible sample. 15 and 18 is another possible sample. 15 and 16, 15 and 17, 15 and 18. Then we move down to 16. We pair 16 with everyone who's under this person, so 16 and 17 is a possible sample. And 16 and 18 is a possible sample. And finally, 17 and 18 is a possible sample right here. This is sample 6. It's a little bit off because I need to make some space to do these calculations here. Then what you would do is you would calculate the mean of each of these samples. You would add these two numbers and divide the total by 2. You would get this. You would add these two numbers and divide by 2 and get this. You do that for all six of the possible samples. And if I asked you what six numbers are in the sampling distribution for a set for a sample size of two, you would tell me that it's just these six numbers right here. These six numbers, the six means, are this sampling distribution right here. If I asked, if I gave you this population and I asked you to calculate the means of all possible samples of three, you would first create these samples. Each time you leave out one person, so right here, the first time I left out 18, I left out 17 here, I left out 16 here, and I left out 15 here. For each of these samples, I added the three numbers and divided the total by three. And I, so if I add these three numbers and divide the total by three, I get 16. If I add these three numbers and divide the total by three, I get 16.33. I did that for all of four of these. If I asked you what numbers are in the sampling distribution of samples of three, you would you could say that it's these four numbers here. So to summarize, if I gave you this population and I asked you to calculate the means of all possible samples of two, you would calculate these means. If I gave you this population and asked you to, to calculate the means of all possible samples of three, you would calculate these means down here. If I gave you this population and I asked you what numbers are in the sampling distribution for the sample size of two, you would know that it's these six numbers here. If I gave you this population and I asked you what numbers are in the sampling distribution for the sample size of three, you would know that it's these four numbers right here. What if I asked you to use the shortcut formula to calculate the standard error for samples of two? The first step would be calculating the standard deviation of the population. To do that, you find the mean of these four numbers, you add them and divide the total by four, you get this population mean of 16.5. You subtract all of the data values from the population numbers, 
by the mean of 16.5. You get these deviations. You square each of the deviations. So negative 1.5 times negative 1.5 is 2.25. Negative 0.5 times negative 0.5 is 2.25. And so on. Once you get all these squared deviations, you add them. You divide by 4 because it's a population and not a sample. So you do a regular average of the squared deviations. You get 1.25, which is the population variance. And then the square root of 1.25 is 1.2, which is your population standard deviation. Remember, the, the population standard deviation is just the square root of the population variance, which we found here. The, the mean of the square deviations is the population variance. The square root of the population variance is the population standard deviation. Once we have our population standard deviation of 1.2, we can go here, divide 1.2 by the square root of 2. The reason why we divide by the square root of 2 is because we're interested in samples, the possible samples with a sample size of 2. When we divide 1.2 by the square root of 2, we're really dividing 1.2 by 1.41 because the square root of 2 is about 1.41. It comes out to 0.85. What this is supposed to be is a shortcut to get the standard error up here. Let's follow this arrow. It's supposed to be a shortcut to this standard error which is the standard error of these six numbers in the sampling distribution for the sample size of two. Remember that this is this, um, the sample size of two. These are all, each one of these is a mean of two people. This is the mean of these two people. This is the mean of these two people. We divide by the square root of 2. It's a, the 2 is in the sample size, and that's what makes it the shortcut to this, um, the standard error for these samples. So just remember, the 2 here goes along with the 2 up here. The 2 under the square root sign goes along with the 2 up here for n equals 2. So if I asked you to get the shortcut value for the, the standard error for the sample size of 2, you would go through the steps that I showed you. You would get the population standard deviation first, which came out to 1.2. You would divide it by the square root of 2, and you would get this answer. After using this shortcut formula, this would be your answer. What if I asked you to take this population of four people and, calc and use the shortcut formula to calculate the standard error for the sample size of three. Well, you would still get the population standard deviation like I did here, but you would divide it by the square root of three, which is 1.2, and this, which is in this case is 1.2 divided by 1.73, which is about the square root of 3, which comes out to 0.69. So after finishing the shortcut formula, this would be your answer if I told you to, to use a shortcut for the sample size of 3. So if, if I tell you to do the shortcut formula with the sample size of 2, your answer would come after doing this step. If I asked you to use a shortcut for the sample size of 3, your answer would come after doing this step, dividing by the square root of 3. It would come out to your final answer here.
if I asked you, what is this a shortcut for when you divide the square the population standard deviation by the square root of two, you would know that it's a shortcut to the standard error for the sample size of two, which is the standard deviation of all of the means of two people. If I asked you if I asked you dividing the population standard deviation by the square root of three is a shortcut to what, you would know that it's a shortcut to the standard error to a sample size of three, which is really just the standard deviation of these numbers in here. So summarizing again, I might have you sort these out in the samples of two. Or I might have you sort them out into samples of three. Either way, I would have you calculate the means of all of the possible samples. I might ask you to use the shortcut formula for either sample size. If I tell you to do it with a sample size of two, you get the population standard deviation first and divide it by the square root of two. If I ask you to do it with a sample size of three, you take the population standard deviation and divide it by the square root of 3. If I ask you, um, what is this the shortcut for when you divide by the square root of 2, you would uh, just know that it's the shortcut to the standard error up here, which is just the standard error, which is really just a standard deviation of these numbers in here, sampling distribution of n equals 2. If I asked you what is, what is this the shortcut for when you divide by the square root of 3, you would just know that it's the shortcut to the standard error for the sample size of 3 which is really just the standard deviation of these four numbers in here. Remember, a standard error is just a standard deviation. It's the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. The fact that it's the standard deviation of a sampling distribution is what gives it the special name. I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. Here I actually calculated standard deviation um, by hand of these six numbers. I found the mean of 16.5. I subtracted all of them by the mean. I had deviations. I squared all of the deviations. I added, so negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 0.5 squared is 0.25, 0 squared is 0, all the way down. I added the squared deviations and got 2.5. Then I divided 2.5 by 6. I didn't mean for this to look like a square root, sorry. Um, I just meant for it to be a division sign. So 2.5 divided by 6 is 0.42. When you're doing this with a sampling distribution, you use the population formula, meaning you don't divide by n minus 1, you divide by n, the number of numbers. You think of it this way. Every sample is included in here, and no samples are left out, so it's a complete set. So since it's since it's a complete set of samples, you use the population formula, which is n and not n minus one. When I divided the total of the squared deviations by six, I got 0.42. The variance. This is a variance because it's the mean of the squared deviations. Square root of that is a standard deviation.
which is our standard error for any for n equals two for this sampling distribution. It's just the standard deviation. This is just the standard deviation of these six numbers, and it's our standard error. I said that dividing the population standard deviation by the square root of two is meant to be a shortcut to that value up here. The reason why it didn't work out perfectly is because the population is only a little bit bigger than each of the samples. It would work better if we were dealing with a, a bigger population. If the population was um, much bigger than the sample. And in this exercise, the population is only twice as big as the, the sample. It's a population of four and a sample size of two. In order for it to, to work very well, the population needs to be about 20 times bigger than the sample size. Over here, what I did is I calculated the standard deviation of these samples, of the means of all possible samples of three. I added these numbers and divided the total by four. I got the mean of 16.5. I subtracted all of them by the mean of 16.5. I got the deviations. I squared each of them. Negative 0.5 times negative 0.5 is 0.25. Um, negative 0.17 times negative 0.17 is 0.03. These all add up to 0.56. That's the total of the squared deviations. Divide it by 4. Remember, with a sampling distribution, it's n. It's not n, it's not n minus 1. It's a variance. The square root of that, of the, the square root of variance is standard deviation, which is our standard error because it's the standard deviation of a sampling distribution, so it's called a standard error. Dividing the population standard deviation of 1.2, which came from over here, by the square root of 3, was meant to give us a shortcut to this standard error, to the standard deviation of these numbers in here. Um, it didn't work very well, once again because the population is only a little bit bigger than each of the samples. The population size is 4 and the sample size is 3. The population size isn't at least 20 times bigger than the sample size. I might ask you, would the standard error, um, I might ask you, if you had a population of four people and you sorted them out into samples of two, and you um, found the standard error of the samples of the samples of two, like we found here by doing this work in here. And if you took the same population of four people and sorted them out in the samples of three and got this standard error down here with this work, which um, standard error would always come out to a larger number? And which one would be smaller? You would just know that the one the standard error with the smaller sample size would always come out bigger, and the standard error with the smaller sample size, I'm sorry, you would just know that the standard error for the smaller sample size would come out larger, and the standard error for the larger sample size would come out smaller, like it did here. n equals 2 came out to 0.645 n equals 3 came out to 0.37. This one will always be smaller than this one. So the larger sample size will always give you a smaller standard error.
um, I might ask you what would happen to both of these standard errors if you added if there was more spread in the population, meaning if these numbers, for example, were 5, um, 10, 15, 17, 35, 39, if they were more spread out. I'm gonna, I might ask you if, if they were more spread out, like I just said, what would happen to both of these standard errors for both sample sizes? The answer is they would both increase. When, you add, when there's more spread in the population of individual people, the standard errors will increase, regardless of the sample size. So these would both increase. But you would also know that even though they would both increase, this standard error with a larger sample size would still be smaller than this standard error up here. Because the larger sample size always gives you a smaller standard error. I might ask you why the shortcut didn't work um, very well for the standard error. Or why this shortcut didn't work very well. And you would just know that the it was because the population was only a little bit bigger than the size of the samples. The population wasn't at least 20 times bigger than the size of the samples. So you, if I asked you that question, you would just know, need to know that. I might ask you to take one of these samples and calculate an estimated standard error. How would you do that? Well, once you have the mean of the sample, for example, if you had the mean of sample 6, um, which is 17.5, the, the mean of these two numbers, you would subtract both numbers by the mean, you would get the deviations, 17 minus 17.5 is negative 0.5, 18 minus 17.5 is 0.5, you would square both of them, You would get these values. This squared is this. This squared is this. These are the squared deviations. You would add them to get the total of the squared deviations. You would divide by n, n minus 1, which in this case is 1 because n is 2. There's two of them, two numbers. One less than that is 1. You would get 0.5, which is the variance. Dividing by n minus 1 gives you the variance. The square root of the variance is the standard deviation. This is a sample standard deviation for this sample right here, sample 6. So that's the sample standard deviation of 0.71. If you take that and divide it by the square root of 2, which is the size of the sample, sample 6 has two people, you get an what's called an estimated standard error. Dividing the sample standard deviation by the square root of n, meaning dividing, by the, dividing the sample standard deviation by the square root of the sample size, gives you an estimated standard error. The estimated standard error for sample 6 is 0.53. And each of these samples would give you a different estimated standard error. If I asked you to calculate an estimated standard error, you um, would just do that. You just calculate the sample standard deviation of the sample I told you to use, and you would take that sample standard deviation and divide it by the square root of n, the number of people in the sample. I might ask you um, to calculate the mean of the population. 
and also calculate the mean of a sampling distribution, such as the mean of the sample, the mean of the sample means for the sample size of two. If I asked you to do that, you would add the four population members, their data values, and divide by four to get the population mean. You would calculate the means of the possible samples of two people. You would list out the means of the samples. You would add them up and divide the total by six, because there are six of them, to get the mean of the sampling distribution. I might also ask you to do that with the sample size of three. If I asked you to do that, the population mean would still be adding these up and dividing by four. You would need to calculate the means of all of the possible samples. And then you would need to add them and divide the total by four. because there's four numbers in here, and you would get the mean of this sampling distribution. I might instead just tell you that the population mean is 16.5 and ask you what would the mean of the sampling distribution equal. And you would need to know that if the population mean is 16.5, the mean of the sampling distribution would have to be 16.5 because these the mean of the population is always the same as the mean of the sampling distribution. So I might ask you a question that just asks you to remember that rule. So if I tell you the population mean, you would have to maybe know that the mean of the sampling distribution would just be the same number. Um, so. These are some possible things that I might ask you about. If I asked you to calculate this estimated standard error for one of these samples, like we did here, taking the sample standard deviation and dividing by the square root of n, I might ask you what this is estimating. And you would know that it's estimating this value down here, which you get by dividing the population standard deviation by the square root of 2, the square root of n. So this value, dividing sample standard deviation by the square root of 2, which is n, is estimating this 0.85, which we got by dividing the population standard deviation by the square root of 2, which is n. So remember, the sample standard deviation right here, which is 0.71, is an estimate of the population standard deviation, which is 1.2 here. This estimates this, which means that this entire estimated standard error estimates this entire thing down here, this entire shortcut formula that we talked about. So it looks like in sample, with sample 6, the estimated standard error of 0.53 underestimated what it was estimating down here. It underestimated the 0.85 somewhat. So it's it's actually an estimate of the answer that we got with the shortcut formula dividing by the square root of 2. Right, it's an estimate of the answer that you would get using this shortcut formula down here with the population standard deviation. And like I said, if the population was bigger, if the population was much bigger than the sample, this number would, um, this right here would give you this number here. This would actually work out as a shortcut. 
um, so just you can let me know if you have any questions. Um, I might have you create the the box histograms that I that I was doing before. I actually probably won't ask you to do this on the exam, but I might ask for it on a future assignment. Uh, this is the mean of this sample. This is the mean of this sample. This is the mean of this sample. Just two 16.5s. 17 is there. We wanted to do it. This is n equals two. We wanted it for n equals three. Would be sixteen. Sixteen point three three, which is about here. Sixteen point six seven, which is here. We're just making a box for the mean of each possible sample. So each box is just meant to stand for the mean of a of one of the samples. 17 is up here. Notice how these ones here are more spread out. The sample means are more spread out when each sample is a sample, when each sample mean is based on two people. When each sample mean is based on three people, they're not as spread out. And that goes along with the standard error. These samples had a standard error of 0.645, so they're more spread out. These samples had a standard error of only 0.37, which is why they're less spread out. So when the samples are more, when the sample means are more spread out, then the standard error is higher. When the sample means are less spread out, like they are here, the standard error is lower. The standard error is just measuring the amount of spread between the means of the possible samples.